And now it's time for Curtain Call. Art Maui 2015 is so big. How big is it? Well, it's so big, Paul James Brown needed two editions of Curtain Call to get it all in. Here's part two for this week's Curtain Call. Juror David Ulrich has given us a wonderful show, and Joelle C. has outdone herself in redesigning it. Ms. Purse has a remarkable eye, and she has created several mini galleries within the Schaefer International Gallery. She is a master at seeing relationships between the works and placing them in proximity to each other. Christine Turnbull, who did such great work in the Schaefer Portrait Challenge, has presented an Ojai, Willow Branch, Bird's Nest ceramic entitled Earth Mother. She is cracked and wounded, with one sad eye partially closed. Her face is distorted, and she looks like she is suffering. It is a powerful statement and belies the juror's observation about Maori artists. Ray Bella, Gabriella Moline, and Ray Slayton have created what for me is the star of this year's Art Maui, Kuoko A Freedom. It's an 89-inch monolith. The front is a golden slab made from aluminum with acrylic gold leaf and wood, featuring a swirl that has the energy of fire and the elegance of a Tiffany jewel. The work is away from the wall, so the viewer can go behind to behold the energy tattoo. This is a geometric shape with 17 vials, 16 on the outside, one in the center, infused with high frequency materials, positioned 22 and a half degrees apart, creating a balanced energetic field that, according to the artist, transforms the ambience of a space. This work has a spirituality and power that is immediate and instantaneous. It belongs in a public space. I hope one of the hotels on the island will recognize its strength and want to share it with their guests and visitors. Gabrielle Anderman had a marvelous show last year. She has two pieces in this show, Jocelyn in the Sea, an acrylic and charcoal on paper is typical of her current work. However, Ocean Waves would only be known by those who have visited her website. She has been doing dark impressionistic images of land and water before she found her inner child. Ocean Waves is acrylic on canvas. It's a stormy, steamy seascape that feels like the darkness El Greco captured in his famous work, The View of, El of Toledo. When I first saw Al Schwartz's number 556, I thought Akira Iha had modified his signature style. But this work, like Mr. Iha's, features layers of paint with layers beneath revealed in scratches as if they had been weathered or aged. I wondered what Chenta Lowry would do for Art Maui. She is on such a roll with two consecutive Juror Choice Awards and a second place in the Marion Friedman People's Choice Award at the Schaefer Portrait Challenge, and she did not disappoint. She has been doing this thread and paper series, but they have all been Lilliputian. But this one, thread lines number five, is three feet by four feet, and it is magnificent. This one is truly museum quality, and I'm surprised the state didn't choose it. Anna Marie Shan's open, a diptych acrylic on clay board, is highly mysterious. The figures seem to be within the head of a silhouette with wild hair, or perhaps they are in that final tunnel that leads to the light. The work brings up many questions, just like Sidney Yee's work, First Brother, Brother First. A man approaches a red doorway behind a frosted window next to the door. A silhouette can be seen. The man approaching is in a misty, cloudy landscape, while lanterns used by Buddhists to remember the dead float above him, making him seem as if he is underwater. I love Lori Kaprowski's fond oil on canvas, Ms. Kaprowski is in a black and white period, and in this elemental pigment creates an electric energy that spills off the canvas and leaps at the viewer. Her confidence in the way she incises figures into the thick white paint demonstrates a mastery of both technique and style that has made Ms. Kaprowski one of the most successful and sought after contemporary painters. Joanne Hopper used techniques developed in the Renaissance by Leonardo da Vinci and Jan van Eyck, among others, to create her Silver Banyan III. She has used silver, gold, platinum, and copper points to create this work. If you shine a light on it, the precious metals in the drawing will reflect the light. It's a process that was abandoned in the 16th century, and very few artists still use it. It results in a warm drawing with great depth. One of the things I love about Art Maui is there's always a new artist whose work hasn't been seen before. This year, it's Beth Cooper, a colorist from the Big Island 
whose nude study is a highly stylized and exciting acrylic. The application of fantastic color heightens the shapes and gives the viewer a new and deeper understanding of the body. Tom Fought has fought back from serious illness and has been exploring a new medium, an iPad, the image from which he prints on aluminum. Here he has depicted an impressionistic reflection of Hamoa Beach. Another of my favorite pieces is Sally Worcester's Sherbet, five teardrop-shaped colored glass vessels that because of the sandblasting and their shape, glow. They are breathtakingly beautiful. There are many other distinguished works in this show, Carrie McCarthy, Julie Hauck, Scott Henry Butner, Pamela Andelin, Sandra Clark, Tony Walholm, Vijay, Tim Garcia, Marilyn Holland, Kevin O'Morrow, Jim Pollan, and Jay Wilson, to name a few. This is a terrific show. Be sure to allocate enough time to invest in Tom Sewell's installation. The show runs until May 2nd. It's open daily 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and before and during intermission of Castle Theater events. Don't miss it. Well, that's Curtain Call for this week. I'm Paul James Brown. Ahui ho! Next week, I'll have a review of The Art of Trash, 